Okay, how can you run for longer without getting tired? How do the pros make it look so effortless? Whether you're training for a 5K, a marathon, or just to get in shape, being out there for longer is gonna make you fitter and faster. And it's also gonna make all of your running more enjoyable. I went from not being able to run for 400 meters to being able to run a marathon in two hours and 21 minutes and represent my country. And within that journey, I learned these things, implemented them, and made all of my running way more enjoyable. Now let's start from the warm up. And gradually throughout the video, I'll be a little bit more technical, but always keeping things incredibly simple. If you implement at least half of these things, tomorrow's run is just going to be a different run for you. If you're the type of person who's used to getting super tired on all of their runs. So the warm up. The way the warm up impacts the run, whether it's a recovery run, easy run, long run, or interval session, is we're priming, we're preparing our body to run the run that it's about to run. And so what we want to do is physically prepare our body and get our muscles ready to do the work, but also our engine, our heart and lungs, and get the effort level up to the point that we're going to be in during the run. And if you can do that during the warm up, it's going to make the run feel much more easy. So if you do that for the long run, and within the space of 10, 12, 15 minutes, you get your heart rate and your effort level up to the point that you're gonna be within the longer run, then the run will feel way more easy. If you just start and go fast, or get to the effort level that you want to sustain throughout the long run, it's going to feel like a shock to the system. And therefore, it's gonna be way more difficult to bring the heart rate down, to bring the effort level or the perceived effort down during the run. And that leads me on to the second point. Start slow. If you can gradually go into a run and start easy and exactly the same in a race, start easy and let the run come to you, gradually you'll be able to sort of up the effort, up the heart rate and be able to elevate your pace. If you start and think like, okay, a sprint start and then try to lower your heart rate, much more difficult to do. Keep your heart rate nice and low. And if you've not got access to heart rate data, keep the effort conversational. So you should be able to have a conversation or get out full paragraphs in a conversational format. If you're doing that, then the chances are that you're in zone two, zone one. And that's exactly where you wanna be and that's gonna enable you to go for further. Form, probably my favorite aspect of being able to go longer for less energy. If your form is incredibly efficient, naturally, just like any other moving object, you're going to be able to go further. So think about your form. Firstly, think about cadence, the amount of steps you're taking in a minute, and your stride length. If you think about the extremes of the stride length, I could ask you to go out there and run for an hour, but take the longest possible steps that you can. And the extreme version of that would be you bounding down the road. Very quickly, your muscles are gonna get tired. Muscularly, you're gonna be tired and fatigued and you're probably not gonna be able to go for one hour. And then your stride length will come back and it will go smaller and smaller and spot until you have to stop because of cramp and because of lactic acid. If you think about the opposite to that, and again an extreme, if I ask you to go out there for an hour and take the smallest steps that you possibly can whilst moving forward, and it's very, very light and easy, then not only are you gonna be able to complete the hour, you're also gonna go way further than the first. For me, the key to getting this cadence and stride length right is feeling comfortable, feeling efficient. So you should be landing underneath your body with each step, not over striding and putting too much effort into the quadricep. Think about if you were a child and you were taking your first steps like a baby and you fall, that essentially has been turned into something called chi running, not so dissimilar. So at the side, it would be slightly down and, you, and your leg and your foot fall is right underneath you. And then you're able to push yourself forward that way. Keep it comfortable and keep it within yourself. What often tires people out during a run is their form starts to go all over the place. And you start to see runners like this and they're twisting the torso and there's a lot of wasted energy both here. And you can think of what that's doing to the leg muscles, 
to the back muscles, to the arm muscles. It's just expended energy for no reason, it's wasted energy. And so if we think about the arms and just driving them forward, bringing them to just about chest height, but keeping them close to the body, often I will check myself when I'm tired and one arm will go out to the side. If I bring that in, already I feel way more efficient. I feel like the heart rate is coming down, the effort level or the perceived effort is way less just because I'm able to bring it, bring it all together. So think about driving your arms and in turn, usually that will bring your cadence and your stride length together and align your legs as they're moving forward. Another way you can go for longer is to run with a group or run with another person. And usually that's because you can have a conversation. And if it's conversational, you're probably not putting in too much effort so that you can then go for further. And that's gonna help push you on for further. What you also need to think about when you're running with a group or running with another person or a small group is where do you fit ability-wise for the run within that group. It may be that at the moment your ability is at the bottom of that group and you've got to improve in order to get into that group. So it might be the wrong group for you and therefore you might, if you go out for a long run or a medium long run, you may be going too fast and therefore it's way harder for you than the people at the front of the group. It may be that the run is too easy for you because you're at the top of the group. Your ability is high and therefore you need to find different group or different people to run with or use that run for a different run within the week. It might be a recovery run or an easy run for you. Even before the run starts, we can look after our hydration and nutrition, which will allow us to go further for the same energy. And so if you think about hydration, if you're waking up in the morning and drinking 500 mils and then sipping water throughout the day and keeping your hydration optimal, Think of it like a car and your hydration and nutrition, fueling, is just like fuel for a car. If you've not got any fuel, you're not gonna be able to go far. And it's exactly the same with the body. If our hydration and nutrition is on point, we're putting ourselves in a position where we're able to get what we need to out of the run. And if that's a long run, we're able to go far. And if it's a fast session, we're able to go fast. But only when we get the hydration right, and then dependent on the run when we get the nutrition right too. So from warm up to form, driving the arms to nutrition and hydration, put those things in place and you will be able to go further. But let me know in the comments, what are your experiences with going far? Was it difficult in the beginning and you've made it easier? How did you make it easier? Or are you struggling at the moment to go far in your runs because you just get too tired too quick? And what are the problems? 